welcome to my home. My name is Sarah and I'm coming to you from the southest part of Sweden where I live with my husband and our two boys and this is my little corner of YouTube where I share some of my biggest interest which is knitting and sewing and sometimes maybe some other crafts that I <laughs> dive into but mainly knitting and some sewing. It's been around about a month since I uploaded my second episode with these uh, with this try in doing this in English and it's got a lot of great response and I'm so grateful for everyone who's commented or wrote to me. I know I'm really bad at responding to notifications and messages but I read everything and I thank you so much for them and that's something I really have to work on but I'm actually not that big of a fan of uh, writing. I'm much better at talking than to respond to like emails and messages but I I will <laughs> try to respond to a lot of your questions in my episodes and um, if there is any question about what yarn I've used or the size I've made, the knitting needles I've used, then the best way to uh, see that is actually to visit my Ravelry where you can find me as Mrs. Valgren or at Instagram where you can find me as Mrs. Valgren Makes. So, I think this could be maybe a quick and a little bit shorter episode where I just update you with my recent makes, what I've frogged <laughs> lately, <laughs> because that seems to be the way I work nowadays. I start something and I rip it out, I start something and I rip it out, but it's okay. I love the part of knitting so much, so it doesn't bother me that much to rip something out, but when it's something that I really really crave or want, <laughs> it's kind of a bad thing for me to rip out because I lo lose steam a little bit. <laughs> so. Um, to keep the steam up I have to just start it over right away and if I don't it just doesn't happen until late. So that's where I am in my <clears throat> making process right now but let's start as we always do uh, with what I'm wearing. This is actually a finished object. This is a linen dress. This is a very modified version. I don't know even if I can call it the Sarah's death shirt dress anymore because the skirt part is the gypsum skirt with 20 centimeters of added length. The sleeves I've drafted myself because I like these type of sleeves better and the upper part is also modified <laughs> quite a bit so it's uh, yeah it's my way of a perfect linen dress. It's not too wide, it's not too tight, it's in this loose crinkly uh, linen from corp.se. It has these buttons in the front and it's a gathered skirt that flares out. I have a full cover picture of this in my Instagram so if you want to see the dress in more uh, full image <laughs> just go over there and watch it there uh, actually these buttons I found in my grandma's uh, sewing sewing box yeah where uh, the box I got from my grandmother with her old like buttons and stuff so these are very old shell buttons that I found in there. But this is actually, no, but this is actually 
the only thing I've been sewing for myself this month but I've been doing some other sewing and <laughs> I've sewn for my nephew this is some summer shorts I mean come on these are so cute so I made him two this is uh, fabric, both of them, is from a company called tygdrömmar.se She has the most beautiful jersey fabrics for kids and they are, most of them are actually Eotex cotton fabrics and that's amazing and um, yeah, so I made him these two shorts This is a free pattern from Brindle and Twig Brindle and Twigs and it calls the brummies, bummies. I will link the patterns from Brindle and Twig in the down bar below. So just check them out there. This is a free pattern. It's real, a really easy zone. And oh my god, these are so cute. So I've been sewing those for my nephew. And I have cut out, but I haven't got the time to finish it. But I actually cut out so he will get um, t-shirts in the same fabrics. This is actually leftover fabrics from when I sewed I sewed one pajamas and one pair of the trousers for him for Christmas and his mother actually really loved this fabric so when I have had something left I decided to make this for him. So I decided to make one t-shirt with the deer and with a black pocket and I just cut out one t-shirt in this blue that is gonna get a deer on the pocket on the front and then I think they can like mix and match all these four items for summer. And I really, really love this blue color. Uh, it's a muted, beautiful blue. So that's actually also a great way to use up leftover fabrics uh, to make these kind of shorts because this takes like no fabric at all. And these are so cute. So if you have a baby, or if you have a baby <laughs> that lives near to you or you have dear to heart these are a great way to use fabric uh, up. Yes, <clears throat> some other finished objects since the last time is I showed you this last time and I didn't have a lot of I didn't have a lot left on it then I think was it done? No, I don't think so. I think I have had a little bit left. But this is my Zweig sweater. This is knitted in Emily Linnitz and Merino Sport for the pink color. And this is called Pink Champagne. And the white one is actually Rauma Fenul in the color... Uh, oh, 400. So, I really, really like this sweater. It's super soft, it's super drapey, it's quite oversized, just like I wanted it to be. And I love the color. It's Emily does a great work with the colors. I really love them. But I don't love knitting and using superwash anymore it's just not something I enjoy I think the fabric gets lovely it gets even and everything but I just don't like the feel of it in my hands as much as I do like these more pure wool yarns where there is some structure and yeah so I'm really glad I used this up. I've had it in my stash for two years now and I really love 
the sweater but I think I'm gonna take some time and not use superwash yarns because I want my knitting to only be pleasurable and nice. I am a really, I'm a person that's actually really sensitive to how things feel in my hands, how the structure feels, how, yeah, I just, it just has to <laughs> feel right in my hand and this doesn't right now and I, I, I love this sweater, I will use it a lot but for the future I will um, choose differently. Uh, no judgment at all. Everyone does exactly what they want and this is just a preference for me and yeah. But the swag is beautiful, the color is beautiful and I would use this a lot. The good thing about the superwash is that it's actually not that warm that, than like pure wool yarn. It's quite sleek and drapey and so I think this over like a white dress or a skirt in the summer evenings will be amazing. So that's a finished object and then I have one more finished object and this got, I got this huge <laughs> craving for color work. I just, I found this Instagram, no, I found this YouTube channel and I'm sure all of you already watch it but it's called The Woolly Thistle. It's by a yarn company or not yarn company, it's a yeah, it's a yarn store online in the US, I think, or maybe Canada, but I think it's US. And she she focused on rustic woolly wool. And I found that on YouTube just a few weeks ago and I just love it. I love oh, she's so adorable and she makes the most beautiful things and she talks a lot about Shetland wool and yeah, yeah, that's the thing. So I got the book Shetland by Marie Wallin and I've actually already bought a pattern that's in this book on Ravelry before and that's the, oh my god, this is the most beautiful thing. Uh, let's see, and that's this one. This is the Yell cardigan and this is, oh my god, this is the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. For, it was such a long time ago, maybe one, two years ago, I saw a picture on Instagram and I can't find that picture now, so I don't know if it was on 60garnernord.sd or if it was on um, uh, black. Oh. oh my god, how can I not remember this? I love this account on Instagram. It called Blackbird and Goose. Oh my god, check out that account. The woman who is running the account is one of the most beautiful women I've ever seen. She has this long... Uh, braided hair in these Rastafari oh, she's just so beautiful and she was wearing this cardigan over a linen dress on a picture that I, I don't know if it was a story if or if it was like a real caption on Instagram I can't find that picture but ever since I saw it I have been obsessed with this cardigan and I've actually bought the pattern right away when I saw her wearing it. But I don't understand a shit about this way of knitting that's in this book. I think that everything in this book is absolutely beautiful. I mean, look at this muckle row. That I actually know that Kia from Kia's Bood has knitted. And I love, let's see, where is it in 
des Christi Unst. Unst. Cardigan. I mean, look at that. That is absolutely beautiful. But the pattern, I don't understand the shit. I don't understand it at all. But I have this huge dream that I think I can manage to <laughs> to figure out how I'm gonna do the gel cardigan. It's that seems to be the, like the easiest way to start, and that's actually the biggest dream I have to have that. So maybe for this summer, the gel cardigan will be my summer knitting. But I started out when I got this book to just pick out a lot of my favorite colors of Rauma. These are all leftover uh, colors that I had in my stash. I have a, a habit of always buying like one and two or two skeins too much of yarn when it comes to like this type of yarn because I always think that you can use them for something else. And so this is how I do, I just pick them out, I put them in a basket and then I start knitting and then I'll just see where it takes me. So I started knitting the burrack cowl. Let's see if I can see it here. And this is the thing about shuttle knitting, I don't know a lot, I don't know a thing actually about the way you should choose your colors or fade or the thing where they highlight the stitches in the middle with quite a high contrast or something. I just go for what I like and that's the only thing that matters actually. But this is the Burakal. So I've made it. This is my Burakal. This is in colors that I love. This is quite muted and for my pop of colors is actually this kind of dusty blue, this kind of bright but sprightly pink and no yellow and the rust color one. And this was actually a great way to start out seeing what kind of colors I would like to have in my gel cardigan and this was so fun. You just knit a long tube and then you kitchener stitch it together. So here is my joint. It's here where I've seamed it together and I think it got pretty good actually. Don't think I see it too much. And yeah, this is the burrow and I'm completely in love, completely obsessed and this is way too much for me what I usually make color wise and stuff but I really think that this together with a one color knitted sweater or like this dress will be beautiful and I love Rauma Finul. I know it's a big of a deal breaker there because some <laughs> really don't like it and some really do but I really love Rauma and this was such a fun way of using it. So the burrow is done and I really really love it and when I was knitting this I just found the most amazing I mean look at these colors together this is actually Rauma too but I've caked it up because this is from a project that I've ripped out before so, I mean, look at this dusty pink together with the rust one, or this brown together with the pink, or maybe, yeah, it's just so many beautiful colors, and I really, really love these uh, Rauma colors that is um, dyed on grey wool. I think they are beautiful. So yeah, that's the burrow owl. That's all that I've done since the last time. And now I can just continue with what I'm working on. So should we start to talk about this? 
because I wish this would be an ongoing project but it isn't this is actually something that I've worked out since the last time I started the unnamed sweater by Melody Hoffman that she's published on her Patreon account and it's such a beautiful sweater it's a bottom-up with a dropped shoulder fitted sleeves and this beautiful rolled neckline and I started it in this beautiful color this is Svensk Ull by Järbo and I knitted it up to where I should separate for the armholes and it was just way too big and I was off gauge I did know that but I thought I had compensated for that in going down in size but that wasn't enough so I had to rip it out and this is the thing when I just don't get going with it right away I just don't do it and I really love the sweater and I really love this yarn and this color so I hope I get the inspiration back so I can start it because I mean a one color sweater in this together with this and I oh, I love it I really really love it so I hope that when the last when we speak next time this will be an ongoing project actually something else that I am doing is when I finished my Buracal I started at another color work project from the book Shetland and this is the hat that's in that book let's see where did I put the book because I don't know the name of this hat it's the Scalloway Tam I don't know Scalloway Tam hat it's this hat it's from the same book, but I knit it in Rauma Finul, so it's quite looser in gauge than in the, the pattern in the book. So this is my um, progress on this so far, and I really love it. I've tried it on, and it actually fits really good. The thing is that Rauma is a heavier yarn than the yarn used in the book so I have gone down a needle size from I think she used 3.5 in the book and I have 3 millimeter needles here and I have actually lost one report of the pattern. I think it's at 30 30 stitch pattern yeah it's it's 30 stitches per uh, pattern repeat and it should be six of them but I only do five so I don't know how this is gonna turn out but this top part here is actually just gonna be five of these I hope that works out I don't know I uh, yeah, let's just try. This is super super fun. It's a quick knit and I try to use the same color as in my Buracal so I can wear them together. And yeah, I think that could be really beautiful. So that is an ongoing project. The next thing is an almost done thing. This is my test knit from Aftenstrik or Aften Studio. I think maybe she's called Afton Studio now. And this is the overwintering cardigan that I'm test knitting for her. I'm all done with the sleeves, with the color work. And the only thing I have left now, according to pattern, is actually the ribbing and the bottom plackets. But I really can't decide if I want to do this longer maybe I actually was thinking about doing this because I have a lot 
I think I have like four balls left of this color. So I can do this pretty long. And I was thinking that maybe a beige really long cardigan for summer could be beautiful to wear like as a jacket but I really like this length too and this is according to pattern so I'm done with all the things I have to do for the test knit but this has actually been resting for about two weeks now because I can't decide if I want to do it longer or if I'm gonna just do the ribbing and bind off here it leans towards that I will just bind off here and use it as a normal <laughs> length cardigan that I actually love and I think this would be amazing to wear. I really really love this. I'm test knitting. She's actually doing this pattern in I think three different gauge. Um, this pattern is you can knit this in two, three different gauge and that will give you like the chunky version and this is a more oversized one and then she has one that's more fitted and um, yeah so this is the I want, ugh. this is the one with a little bit more positive ease and um, yeah that's what I love wearing nowadays so that's what I did this is the color 0406 in Rauma Finoy and then it's the same color as I had in my Zweig is 0400 also from Rauma Finoy and these are the colors for my overwintering. The next thing I've started is also a huge inspiration from the Woolly Thistle. I've watched a lot of that show lately and she makes the most beautiful one colored basic raglan sweaters in Rauma Finel and so actually everything I'm knit on right now is in Rauma Finel. That's pretty boring maybe but I actually love this yarn so it doesn't bother me at all. This color is the color 0414. It's this anthracy grey, uh, really really dark grey. And I actually had six balls of this at home in my stash. So I started this no frills sweater. I think this is my fourth one. Um, this is a modified version. I do a little bit more short rows than in the patterns and I actually just take the numbers for where to start, start the raglan and stuff and then I just work it as far as I want. This is the basic raglan sweater but this is where I'm at at that. This is actually something that I really really want in my closet but it may be not it's maybe not the most fun to knit but this sweater together with some high-waisted skirts and uh, I just think this could be a really good staple in my wardrobe so this is something I'm working on and it's actually quite good when I'm done with the overwintering cardigan I only have this and this on the needles and that is quite a good variation <laughs> for a lot of color work where I have to watch the pattern and mindless stuck in a stitch in the round that I can bring along with me everywhere. I can knit when we travel in by car or I can just because I don't have to watch this knitting I can just go on so when you watch a movie or anything so it's quite good I I have so much inspiration on what I want to do right now I have so many things I want to sew I have so many things I want to knit I have so many things I want to do in the garden I have repotted all the cucumbers now but I still have the tomatoes left I have started growing the peas and the herbs and 
next weekend I will try to get all the beets and beetroots in the ground. But springtime is actually a time where I feel really inspired and I have a lot of energy. But it's also a time where there is a lot of other stuff happening. We have a lot of birthdays and yeah. So I try to relax in these three things. It actually stresses me out a little bit to have three things on the needles. Two things is my... that's the best. If, if it's only two things that's <laughs> great. One uh, thinking project and one not thinking project. So when my overwintering is done that is what I have on the needles and yeah let's see where spring takes me <laughs> I don't know I have so many plans and maybe some will come true some will not some I will start and frog and yeah that's the way life is actually I have to show you this one because I haven't had that much time by my sewing machine lately knitting is so much easier to just sit in the couch in the evenings when the kid has got to sleep and it's so much easier to just bring along with you you can knit watching tv you can knit in the car you can you can knit everywhere but when i'm sewing i have to be at home and i have to do it i have to concentrate a lot more so it has it hasn't been so much sewing but i think that would come when everything <laughs> slows down a bit so i had a lot of leftover fabric from this dress and i have a lot of leftover fabric from my petticoat skirt white linen skirt that i made recently so i have these two beautiful linen fabrics that i hope to turn out to some nice summer blouses uh, I haven't found a great pattern yet. Maybe one of them will be the Gilbert top that I made last year from Helen's Closet with the tie in the front. And then I bought these. I mean, oh my god, these are so beautiful. I bought this plain cotton fabric from tygdrömmar.se in this rust terracotta colorway and I've actually got three meters of this so this could be a beautiful dress or an, a skirt I don't know but something to wear in the summer I actually love the skirt that so liberated has that's not the gypsum skirt the one with the buttons in the front so maybe that one or maybe a sleeveless dress so I can wear this as a skirt but with a cardigan on top or yeah something and then I saw this fabric and this is also a woven cotton fabric and this is so beautiful I mean look at that beautiful and this will also be a summer blouse for me this summer with some wooden buttons and yeah I think it's gonna be beautiful. I try not to stress out about not having time to sew right now because I know the time is coming and I don't need clothes. I have clothes to dress myself in but I think this would be lovely for spring. So that's about it for me today. Uh, I think it is, is a little bit shorter than my regular time on my podcast but I think we have like 35 minutes now and that's pretty good actually that's a good amount of time for an episode I think so I wish you a beautiful continue of this spring and I wish you a lot of time outside when spring comes to you or actually autumn if you're on the other side of the world but I'm so looking forward to spring right now 
cleaning out in the garden, hiking, yeah. Have a lovely day.